guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday um, over here in not so sunny California today. Um, but it is Wednesday at noon right here on the West Coast. So that means this week is officially halfway over. Um, thank you all for joining me today, too. I know um, we're doing a live lightning dock demonstration today, but I have to just start off with a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Audie Munoz. For those of you who don't know me, I handle client relations here over at Jirasi LLP and Lightning Talk. Um, I've been here for about three years or so now, and actually, this Friday is my third year anniversary. Best place I ever worked. Um, sitting in the back end, you can't see here, but I'm going to give her a little shout out anyway. I have Casey Stevens from my team. She's actually in our marketing department, um, and she's just helping me out with this live demonstration here. Fun fact about her, she recently survived Hurricane Ian, so go give her a grasp on that. Um, cool, cool, but just a little bit about how this demo is going to work. I'm going to start off with showing you Lightning Talk, showing you our system and just kind of the capabilities and or restrictions, what you can do, what you can draft in Lightning Talk. Um, after that, I will walk you through our actual document set itself. Um, and then after that, we'll end with a little Q&A here. So, should be easy peasy, should be pretty straightforward, but I am going to start off with just sharing my screen here. Cool, cool. Um, so just a little bit about Lightning Docs at its core. Lightning Docs is a website that we use to produce loan documents in all 50 states. Um, the system is very user friendly and each system, each user has their own account where they can either draft new loan documents and or access their old files. Um, so for starters here, I'm just going to log into my friend Michael Mascara's account right here. It's actually one of our Jirasi staff members um, as well. So in this case, I'm logged into Michael's account so you can see all these test files that have already been made. Um, now, I can log into any of these old files that I want to or need to at any time, meaning that you'll never be charged again for editing an old file. A lot of times, you know, we understand that loans get delayed and maybe at the time of closing, you need to go back in and enter in a higher loan amount, maybe a higher interest rate, maybe adjust your fee section a little bit. Um, you have full capabilities of doing so on Lightning Docs. All you really got to do is hit this button right here that says click to return to interview. After that, the system is going to do a little bit of thinking here, and then it's going to take you right back to the page where we enter in all of our loan information. Um, so like I said, it's really easy. It's very user-friendly. If you want to go here and change any of the older information that was entered in, um, you can do so anytime. But for today's purposes, since we are training and this is a live demonstration, I'm actually going to start with a brand new file right from scratch. Um, so in order to do that, I'm just going to click on this Create New Document button right here in the top right-hand corner. After that, it's going to ask me which loan template that I want to use. Um, there's only one available. Luckily for you, not a whole lot of options to get tripped up on. Um, and then after that, you'll see this Import Data button right here as well, where I can either choose a file to upload from my computer, um, typically a JSON file, that gets shot right into Lightning Docs to pre-populate some of the loan terms. Um, I will be revisiting this a little bit later on. Like I said, I am just going to start off with a brand new interview from scratch here. Um, so first and foremost, I'm just going to go ahead and get this interview opened up here. Like I said, the system is going to do a little bit of thinking, but this is our interview out of course. So like I said, Lightning Box really is just data entry. Not a whole lot to it if you know what you're doing and if you have those loan terms right in front of you. Um, so since I'm starting off with a new document here, it says loan prepared by, all I'm going to do is put in my name and my email address. Um, there isn't a whole lot to this first page of Lightning Docs. Let's see a couple buttons on here. Are you a Jirasi attorney? Um, the address of the preparer. So that's usually just the lender's address. Um, and then you'll see this field right here for clients where you can enter in a specific password. What this field is and what it does is Sometimes our clients will request special customizations to our document set, whether that be dropping in a certain term of provision, maybe editing so they have their ACH form included, just different requests like that. Uh, I will be revisiting this a little bit later on, so I am going to skip past it for now, but just take a mental note of that. After this, I am going to move on to my loan information page here. 
So again, very basic information. What's the closing date? What is the loan number? Just going to put in any random information here. Um, but it's really cool. What sits behind this page is the automation that sits behind it. Um, so what that means is, for example, we only ever ask for one date in the document set, and that's the closing date that this loan is going to get funded on. Um, now, in turn, that closing date will actually be used to generate the maturity date in the document set, the date of the first payment, prepayment penalty if there is one, so on and so forth. Basically, all of the dates within the document set are calculated automatically just off of that closing date. Um, now, um, similarly to that, all of our payment amounts will also be calculated for us automatically just based off of that loan amount and interest rate entered in here. You do have the option of customizing this um, interview however you want to or need to. So whether you're doing a short-term fix and flip loan or a longer DSCR loan, maybe 30 years with impounds, something like that, this first page is really used to tweak the customization. So like I said, for today's purposes, I am going to start off with a much simpler transaction, maybe a short-term fix and flip. So I'm just going to do a short 12-month um, interest-only loan in this case. If you're doing a construction loan, maybe like I said, you're doing a fix and flip, you do have the option of including a hold back here as well. Maybe you're holding back $50,000 that's going to be specifically used for windows or the roof or whatever you're redoing on your property. You have the option of including a hold back here and either charging interest on the full loan amount or only the amounts dispersed. So what's really cool about this is if I switch this back and forth, this will actually completely tweak my payment amounts in real time. Um, and it'll take them right into the document set. So I'll walk you through our document set a little bit further and show you exactly where this translates over into it. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as yes. Um, there's a couple of more fun options on this page. Some of the more common ones that we see are including a guarantor on this loan. You have the option of including either a full recourse guarantee, a limited recourse guarantee, or a springing guarantee. Um, and I'll just touch a little bit on each one of these options. So basically, a full recourse guarantee is just if you're going into default, your guarantor is automatically going to have to take over payments for your borrower. Um, a limited recourse guarantee is if your borrower happens to commit any bad acts which is why it's called a bad boy guarantee, such as um, filing for bankruptcy or fraud or just you name it. Basically, if I select limited recourse guarantee, the guarantor becomes financially responsible for the payment of those bad acts committed by your borrower. Um, the last little option here is a screening guarantee, and it's somewhat of a mix of both the first full recourse guarantee and the second limited recourse guarantee. Basically, um, if your borrower commits certain bad acts and the guarantor gets sprung into action, they would have to cover the cost of those bad acts along with your full loan amount. Um, but I am just going to leave this as a full recourse guarantee because that's typically the most commonly used option of the three. Next up, if you're doing a big loan where maybe you have nine, ten different properties, you're doing a lot of track houses, you can actually include individual release prices for each property. Um, I'll leave that as no for now, but I will revisit that later on as well. Um, the next couple little things here are our custom loan terms, which I like to call them. The first one being our debt service reserve. So if you're familiar with this industry, a lot of our clients actually use interest reserves. So maybe they're going to hold back a specific number of months for those monthly payment amounts. And what we have to do is put in that number here, either in a number of months or in a monetary amount. Shortly thereafter, you will see a prepayment penalty. We have a couple different options here as well, such as a prepayment penalty in a number of months, also known as guaranteed interest. So maybe you're hoping or you're going to penalize your borrower if they repay this loan anytime within those first six months. That's your best option to choose. After that, you'll see a couple more options, such as a linear step down prepayment penalty, prepayment penalty in months, percentages, or a specific amount, and a nonlinear yearly step down penalty, which is typically used in larger DSDR loans, maybe 30 years with impound, um, but we will revisit that later as well. Next up here, we do have the option to include an extension on this loan. So all I'm going to do is put in the number of extensions that I want to grant my borrower, along with the number of months for each extension, and if I am going to be charging a fee amount for extending this loan. Um, something that is good to note regarding our extension is that it is a conditional right to extend this loan. It's not an automatic right to extend the loan. So you're 
your borrower can't automatically extend it without receiving written consent from you as the lender first. Um, another commonly used um, prompt that we have is if you want to include tax and insurance impound and bake them into your monthly payment amount. If you want to do so, all you have to do is select yes and input the amounts for each one. And as I hover over some of these fields, you'll see a little light bulb pop up. This is what's known as resource text. So in the event that you don't know what something is, maybe you're not sure exactly how tax and insurance impounds work, maybe you're not exactly sure how our extensions work, all you gotta do is click on the little light bulb and you'll see a pop up right here. It tells you exactly how that feature works and what it does. Moving on with the last little things on this page, we have our ACH form. Um, you have the option to include that as well. And something that is really cool, and again, back to our automation that sits behind this interview, is our ACH forms are actually coded for each individual loan servicer. So for example, if I select FCI as a loan servicer for this loan, our ACH form will actually be replaced with FCI's ACH form, just to make for a smoother closing process. After that, we have our lender information page. Not a whole lot of options here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in a random lender name. Um, there are a few options on here. The first one is just to replace the references to the lender entirely with a reference to an exhibit A lender list. So to do that, all I would have to do is select yes. This isn't really commonly used by our users, but it is used sometimes. So maybe you're doing a big loan that has a lot of fractionalized interest. You have nine or 10 different lenders that aren't quite finalized just yet. Um, if you don't know their information, it's great to select yes to this question because you can actually attach that lender list to the loan later on when the loan is actually closing. Um, alternatively, if you're doing a you know, loan, maybe there's only two or three different lenders, all you gotta do is put in their name and their invested amount, and then all you gotta do is click this button that says click to add another lender and do the same here. So I would just say lender two, $500,000, and our system will actually split apart their beneficial interest accordingly. Um, I'm gonna delete the second lender right here. If you ever need to do so, all you gotta do is select this little triangle button and a drop down menu will appear and you can select delete repetition and that'll get rid of lender two. After that, we have our borrower information page. So I am gonna do a loan where there's two different borrowers on this transaction and actually let me go back to delete that. Sorry about that. Um, for our borrower information page, I'm going to do a loan where there's two different borrowers, just so you can see exactly how our system, um, how the information gets entered into our system. So for our first borrower, I am going to use my lovely friend who's sitting on this demo with me, Casey Stevens, as an example. Um, you can select this drop-down menu right here, and you'll see a couple different options pre-coded in. You can select either an individual, a corporation, an LLC, so on and so forth. If you're doing a loan to an individual borrower, it's really simple. All you've got to do is select individual and answer the question if they're using a power of attorney to sign. Um, typically that is no and you are going to move on. And something that's really cool to note here is that our system actually has no restrictions on any number of things that can be entered in. So if I want to add in another borrower, all I got to do is click add another borrower. If I want to add in 50 other borrowers, our system will not stop you from doing so. Um, so for this case, I'm going to say that this is an LLC as a borrower. So maybe I'll just say um, home buyer LLC. And I'm going to select limited liability company from this drop down menu, along with the state that this company is incorporated within. Um, this first section here is where we actually say who's going to sign these loan documents. So whoever the manager or the managing members of these LLCs are, you're going to enter in their information here. Um, so in this case, I'm going to use my own name as a signer, and I'm going to select individual, just because I'm not a corporation or a company, obviously. And for title, I'm just going to put manager. Um, something about our system, and I will touch on this a little bit later on, is if I were to select anything other than individual from this drop-down menu, it'll actually generate a sub-page in the interview where it's asking me who's allowed to sign on behalf of that second company. Um, so this is really good because the system is capable of doing nested LLCs and it is built to track down an individual signer. Um, so if you're entering in company, signs by company, signs by company, until you get to an actual warm body 
it will keep prompting you with signing authority. Next up here is our member information page. A lot of our users just do single member LLCs, but basically our member information section is used to generate an entity certificate in our document set. So basically it works as a type of signed um, authorized signer resolution where the members or owners of the company grant the managers or managing members the power to execute these loan documents on the company's behalf. Um, something that to note here is it is specific to the individual loan and the individual transaction rather than the actual company as a whole. Um, so if you were doing a loan later on from either whether that be in Lightning Docs or outside of Lightning Docs, it wouldn't make sense to use the same entity certificate as it is written for the individual transaction. Next up here, we have our notice information page. Not a whole lot to mention on this page except for we can actually set system defaults for you. So for example, if you use the same lender for every single transaction and you get tired of entering that lender's address in every time, we can actually pre-code that so it auto populates for you just to save a little bit of time on the interview. Moving on here, we have our property information page. Again, not a whole lot to this page, pretty basic information. So if I was doing a loan at 2300 Main Street in California, let's just say that's Los Angeles County, and I'll just do the city as Los Angeles since we're at it. I am gonna put in a property tax ID number. I'm just gonna make a random one up off the top of my head right now. But basically we ask for this in the event that the wrong legal property gets um, attached by title. At least you'll have that property tax ID number, also known as a parcel number, also known as an asset search parcel number or an APN. But basically this is used kind of as a social security number for a property. And that's just to ensure that title correct, uh, attaches the correct legal property description when this loan is closing. Um, as mentioned earlier, our, loan, our system won't restrict you on any number of borrowers, any number of properties, so on and so forth. Um, same thing goes for our trustees. This system is actually coded to be very state-specific as well. So if I switch this from California to Texas, for example, you'll see completely different trustee options. Um, in this case, total lender solution pops up for Texas just because the system knows that specifically a Texas trustee requirement. Um, in this case, I'm going to switch it back to California and Los Angeles here. And I'm going to select my property owner as Casey Stevens. And like I said, our system won't restrict you on any number of borrowers, properties, guarantors, so on and so forth. So if I wanted to do, like I said, a cross-collateralized cross -collateralized loan, maybe a big portfolio loan, it's as simple as just clicking that click here to add another property button and just re-entering my same information. Um, but something that is really cool about Lightning Docs, again, going back to the automation, is our system will actually split apart um, deep into our our system will actually split apart properties into two different security instruments if they're located in the same, if they're located in different counties um, and or owned by different borrowers. So in this case, I said that there were two borrowers on this loan. One of them was Casey Stevens, the other one was Home Buyer LLC. In this case, I said my first property was located in Los Angeles County and owned by Casey Stevens. And our second property was owned by Homebuyer LLC and located in San Diego County. So Lightning Box actually knows that those are going to be split apart onto two different security instruments just because they are, they do have to be recorded in separate counties. Um, so this is just our way of saving you time and money when recording. Similarly, if I switch this over to LA County and I said that this property was owned by Casey Stevens, that would actually be tied into a single deed of trust rather than split apart onto two. Moving on, here we have our loan sale information page. Not a whole lot to this page, but it is really cool because you do have the option of selling off this loan either at closing or after loan closing. And we do have a couple of options pre-coded into our system here as well for some of these more major loan buyers that we see in our space. Um, if you select either of the two options, either at closing or after closing, you'll have the option of including an assignment and a launch on this transaction as well. Um, so if I switch this from not intended to fail to after loan closing, you actually notice that another page pops up right here on my left 
sidebar. Um, it says loan documents here, but at the end it will ask you if you want to produce either the loan documents, an assignment, and a launch, and or both. In this case, I'm going to say I'm going to produce it after loan closing, and I'm going to sell it to Rego. And I'm going to move on, and I will touch on that page a little bit later on at the end. Um, next up here, we have our guarantor information page. Not a whole lot to this page. If I'm including myself as an individual guarantor, all I have to do is put my name and select individual from this drop-down menu here. Um, of course, if I'm doing anything other than an individual, I select LLC, for example. Our system will actually mimic that borrower information page that we saw a little bit earlier, where it asks you who's allowed to sign on behalf of that LLC. Um, for today's purposes, I am going to keep it as an individual. That's more so one of the common options that we see is they'll include the members and our managing members as individual guarantors on these transactions. Next up, we have our governing law and licensing page, and this is where we want to choose which state and which county we want this loan governed by in the event that it goes to arbitration. Um, typically, see, we see our users include the property state and county that they selected for the collateral property. There are other options. It doesn't have to specifically be the state and county that your property is located in. There are some beneficial it can be beneficial at other times to use a different state and county. Um, if you have any questions on that, we'd be happy to answer them um, either during the Q&A or just separately anytime. Moving on here, we have our last little page on this interview. And this is where we use to gen, this is the page that we use to generate our lenders instructions information. So this is where I'm going to pull all of that information off of my preliminary title report and pop it right onto Lightning Docs. And it's going to write, it's going to go ahead and write them into a nice, tightly written transaction that tells title and escrow everything that needs to happen before this loan closes. Um, so in this case, I'll just use Fidelity National Title Insurance as our title company, and I'll just say our title officer is Joe Title. I'm going to go ahead and skip past this street address just because we always default to mailing our documents rather than sending them by snail mail. Um, and like I said, we really just take this page and we pull all of the information from our preliminary title report and just pop it right into these fields here. Um, so the first you'll see is our title order number and effective date, usually found on page one of the prelim or somewhere along those lines. So I'll just select um, October 5th as the effective date. Put in a random order here. After that, you'll see two additional fields as well. You'll see exception items I want to be deleted. And these are exceptions from coverage, so it is good to get as many of them off as possible. So if I want one, two, three, and four deleted, it's as simple as just typing that right into the field. Um, after that, it'll ask me which alt endorsements I want added into this transaction. But what's really cool is you likely won't have to worry about entering any information into this field. As Lightning Docs will actually include endorsements based off of the terms that are entered. So again, going back to this resource text here, if I click on this little light bulb, you'll see a pop-up. On every single transaction, we always include ALTA 9, ALTA 22, and ALTA 27. But as I touched on earlier, it will write in ALTA endorsements based off of the terms that are selected as well. So in this case, I said that there, if I go back to this loan information page, I said that there was a $50,000 construction holdback. So what Lightning Docs is going to do in that case is actually going to drop in ALTA 32 and ALTA 33 as well, just because it knows that those are specific construction-related endorsements. Um, same thing goes on this loan sale information page. I said that this was going to be assigned to Rego after loan closing, and our system actually knows that ALTA 10 needs to be included as well. Um, so that is a more common question that I get asked by our users is which endorsement should we be including um, and I always just tell them, don't worry about it because Lightning Talk will take care of it for you. And if not, we're here to answer your questions anytime. After that, last little couple things on our interview here is really just our fee section. So any fees payable to either the broker, if there is one on the transaction, the lender, and or any third party. So maybe you're doing a $10,000 origination fee. and maybe a $500 processing fee. And then the last little thing here is just fees paid to others. So this is really if you have a third party involved in the transaction, maybe someone comes in an appraisal on the property, 
something like that. This is where you'll list any fees payable to anyone who isn't a broker and lender. Um, something else that we are pretty proud of is this fee delivery comment drop down, just because I know, especially during the closing process, it gets really frustrated when fees are sent to the wrong places. Maybe it got sent to the wrong address, it got sent to your loan servicer instead of the lender, so on and so forth. Um, like I said, Lightning Docs does write a very nicely written transaction that will tell title and escrow every single thing that needs to happen before this loan closes. It kind of forces them to read our escrow instructions instead of just breathing right through them. Um, and this delivery fee comment does help as well. Moving on to the end here, like I touched on earlier, once I selected that this loan was going to be sold after it closed, it does give me the option of producing an assignment and a launch with my loan document. So here I can select either the loan document, an assignment, and a launch, or both. In this case, I'm going to select both. And that basically brings us to the end of our interview here. So once I'm done, once I'm satisfied with all of the information that is entered in, all I'm going to do is click this finish button right here in the bottom right hand corner. Our system's then going to do a little bit of thinking while it assembles the documents. And then afterwards, it's going to take me right back to that portal um, where I initially created this loan. And should be doing that right about now ish. There we go. Thank you for not making a liar out of me, Lightning Docs. Um, so like I said, it takes me right back to this portal, and you will notice that the name of the document actually changed. That's something that Lightning Docs takes care for you, takes care, takes care of for you as well. So it'll actually rename the file based off the terms that are entered in. So it starts with the property address, followed by a borrower name, followed by lender name, state, and loan number. And on this landing page right here, you'll see the option to either download your loan documents, which I'm going to do at this time. Our loan documents actually download as a Word document as well. So in the event that you need to go through and edit any information that was entered in after the fact, you have the option of either doing it directly right onto the loan document set itself, or as I touched on earlier as well, you could just click this return and interview button. Anytime, it'll take you right back to that page we just ended on um, where I entered in all of the information for this loan. So I'm going to go ahead and split my screen here, and I'm going to show you a little bit of how Lightning Docs writes these terms right into the document set. So in this case, you'll remember that I was doing a, whoops, looks like I have other documents trying to open on my computer. All right, should be good to go now. Apologies for any little delays here. It looks like StreamYard is actually slowing down my computer just to tap, but it looks like we're good now. All right, so if you guys recall from earlier, I said that we were just doing a short-term maybe bridge loan and or stick and flip loan. Um, so really, like I said, the last page of the interview itself is used to generate the first set of documents, or first document within the actual set. So if you recall, I entered in all of our information for the title and or escrow company, if there was escrow involved. Um, and you'll see that baked right into our lender's closing instructions, this first document here. So you'll see that I've entered Fidelity with Joe. Um, and like I said, it just wrote those right into the document set. Um, if I move past this, you'll see all of the information that I entered relating to our property address, loan amount, borrowers, so on and so forth along with the stacking order of all the actual documents that are included in this set. Um, if I scroll through, you'll see our funding condition. And if we get into section C5, my favorite section right here, this is where you'll see all of the um, title policy information. So it tells title and escrow exactly which policy is being requested and what the amount that's being requested in. You'll see our lien position right here for the both properties. Um, and you'll see our exception items that I listed to be deleted. So if you recall, I entered in one, two, three, and four. It'll write those into the documents right here, along with the ALTA endorsements that I wanted added in. Um, so if you recall from this little resource text, I meant, oops, wrong resource text. Um, I mentioned that ALTA 922 and 27 would be included for every single transaction. Um, and like I said, I did include an a construction hold back for this one, so it dropped in also 32 and 33. And since I'm selling this loan later on, it also dropped in also 10. 
Scrolling past this, you'll see initial blocks for our title and escrow agents, along with signature blocks. So like I said, this really forces them to go through and make sure they're reading every single word of these closing instructions. I'm sure you all know title and escrow can breeze through these things just because they're closing a million loans a day. Um, but this kind of forces them to slow down a bit and do some thinking and just not breathe through this process, not rush it, because um, it shouldn't be rushed. Got to make sure everything kind of checks out correctly. Moving past this, you will see our fee section. So again, any fees payable to either the broker, lender, or third parties, if there were any. Um, something that is really cool about this section, though, is like I touched on on the loan information page, our amounts are calculated for us automatically. So this per diem interest is never something that you'll need to figure out. Um, and it is actually state specific as well. So since I said that this was a California loan, it actually dropped in this verbiage in the comment section that specifically relates back to the state of California. Um, if I was doing a loan in Texas and or Florida or something similar to that, it would look a little bit different here. Scrolling through the section as well, you'll see our reserves, holdbacks, and impounds. Again, these were calculated for us automatically just based off of the terms that are selected. Um, so it gets right down to the cent, you'll see $40,000 and two cents. That may seem very specific, but that is the calculation for a six month interest reserve. Um, a couple more spots that I wanna show you before I go back and make this a little bit more complicated is our key provision summary. Really proud of this section as well, just because it is a nice, neat little breakdown of everything that's included in the actual document set. So you'll see our payment amount here. You will see our interest rate. You'll see our borrowers and our guarantor name, so on and so forth. Um, just a nice, neat little table for you. Moving past this, you'll see our loan and security agreement. Lots of boilerplate stuff here, lots of just pretty straightforward information. But if I scroll over here to section 2.8, this is when you'll start seeing our custom terms get dropped in here. Um, so in this case, I said that there was a $50,000 construction reserve. All I did on this loan information page was select yes to that button and put, input the amount. And it actually went and dropped in three or four pages just specifically related to construction reserves in the document set. Um, so quite the lengthy result for quite minimal effort is what I usually tell people. Um, scrolling back past that, you'll see our debt service reserve. Again, calculated automatically for you. Never really something that you need to worry about. Um, along with our conditional right to extend this loan, so on and so forth. If I scroll through right to the end of this document set, here you'll see a nice and neat little, where is it, signature block uh, for both our borrowers. So in this case, I said that Casey Stevens was our first borrower. Really short, really straightforward, easy peasy. All she got to do is sign. And I said Home Buyer LLC was our second borrower. But as mentioned, our system will keep asking you who's allowed to sign until it tracks down a warm body. Um, so until I put Audie Munoz is signing, it will keep asking me who's allowed to sign on behalf of that company. Moving past that, we'll see our secured note. Again, pretty straightforward, nothing too atypical here, but I do want to touch on the automation again. Um, and this is really where you'll start seeing our dates come into play. So like I said, it will calculate the maturity date for you. It will also calculate the date of the first payment um, along with those payment amounts so on and so forth. If I move over here to section 2.7, you'll see references to our specific um, terms that I entered in, such as the debt service reserve, construction reserve, so on and so forth. It actually just references back to that section we looked at in the loan and security agreement. Um, moving past this, you'll see our deed of trust in this case. Um, but like I said, you can do documents in all 50 states and lightning docs. So if you're doing a loan maybe in Florida, it will actually be replaced with a mortgage rather than a deed of trust, so on and so forth. And I know specifically for Florida, they need a bit more space for recording. So you'll see this drop down like so um, if I were to switch that state. It is written to the actual specific state requirement. Um, and if I scroll through this, starting at section five is where you will start seeing those specific state requirements. So these are all our uniform covenants, as we call them. And then starting at section five is where we start getting into our non-uniform covenants. Our covenants. Um, so this is where you'll see all of our state-specific California requirements in this case. Moving past this, you'll see our 
second deed of trust because if you recall i said one property was located in la one was located in san diego so it knows that that actually has to be split apart on two two different security instruments if i scroll past the second deed of trust you will see our guarantee this is pretty straightforward just to make sure that your guarantor understands and accepts all of the terms and conditions of this loan and just knows what they're entering into kind of getting themselves into um, but this document actually or contains state-specific requirements as well. So if I look over here um, to section 35, or yeah, section 25, you'll see that there's waivers, and that'll state or site-specific California codes right here in section 25.2.11. Um, you'll see these civil codes dropped in, and of course, those will change based off the states that's selected. Um, if I scroll past this, you'll see section 9. Actually, or section 39 actually lists community property. So this will tell you all the states that require um, the guarantor's spouse to kind of sign um, on behalf of that guarantor to consent to buying community property, essentially. And if I scroll past this, you'll see a signature block for our guarantor as well. Moving on here, we get into disclosure land, as I like to call it. I won't spend too much time on each of these, but I do, I will touch on them briefly. Um, this language capacity declaration is a handwritten document and it's actually included so your borrower can't make the argument that they didn't speak English when the time that the loan closed. We've seen it happen before, it'll likely happen again, which is why we include the language capacity declaration. Um, and it will include them for each individual signer, so you'll see here that there is one for my friend Casey and there's one for myself as well. Moving past this, you'll see our compliance agreement followed by our hazard insurance disclosure. Again, pretty straightforward, pretty boilerplate. Um, same thing goes for our arbitration and waiver of jury trial agreement. So this is where we selected the state and county that we wanted to use in the event that this loan went into arbitration. You'll see that baked right into this document set here. Um, moving past that, you'll see our balloon payment disclosure. I said this was an interest only loan, so the borrower have to sign this to acknowledge that they owe the lender all the unpaid principal and or interest at the time of the balloon payment or maturity date. Um, moving past this, we have our conditional loan approval. This basically gives the lender the power to pull out of these documents even after the set has been signed by the borrower, along with our co-appraisal report disclosure. Um, and again, here we're always working on making sure that our documents contain the most up-to-date information possible. So the state of California actually just passed this requirement. Basically, it works a little bit similarly to the fair lending notice where we say that we can't discriminate based off race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, so on and so forth. Um, you can't discriminate during an appraisal as well. Moving past this, you'll see our non-owner occupancy. Um, this is another uh, handwritten section, and it basically just ensures that your borrower is not living at the property. So they're actually required to write in their own writing their true and only principal residence address on these lines. And moving past that, you'll see our business purpose of loan certification. Again, a handwritten section. All you really got to do is write down the purpose of this loan and the approximate amount needed for that purpose. And we don't do consumer loans on Lightning Docs. Something um, very important to note. So that's why this document is included here. Moving past then, you'll see our environmental indemnity agreement and our entity certificate. So I know I touched on this page a little bit earlier on when we were on our borrower information section. Um, and I was saying that the member information is only asked to generate this entity certificate. So this was the document that I was referring to that I said works as a type of authorized signer resolution where the owners of the company grant the managers and or managing members the power to execute these documents on the company's behalf. Um, so it is specific to this transaction and this transaction alone. You'll see the loan amount here. You'll see all of our borrower and lender's information entered right here on top. And then this document will be signed by all of the owners of this property. In this case, I said that I was both the owner and the manager, so same party for both signatures. After that, we have a California-specific document set here. We have our ACH form, which, like I said, is coded to the individual loan servicer that's selected, followed by our assignment and a launch. So, like I said, if you are intending on selling this loan anytime later on, 
we can produce an assignment and a launch that can be recorded either at closing or after closing. And this basically just details all of the information of the new lender who this loan is going to be assigned to. Um, and then record has recording blocks right here on top. Sorry to breeze past that. And we also include notaries for each one of our document sets that needs one as well. And I believe that wraps up, oh, sorry, anti-money laundering declarations is um, kind of speaks for itself, but that really wraps up our loan document set. So now I'm gonna get into, go right back into this interview, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like to make the transaction maybe a little bit more complicated here and just touch on some of the customizations that we can offer our clients. Um, so if I go back to this first page, this client-specific condition page, if you recall when I first started off the interview, there is this password field right here. So this is how we build out specific customizations for each one of our clients. Um, in this case, I'm gonna use my own name for the password. You'll see I have a lovely little Kim Kardashian quote pop up right here. That's our coder just having a good time, but it kind of just shows you how quickly and how easily we could code things specifically to your needs. He knows I need brightening up every so often in my day, so why not include a Kim Kardashian quote? Um, same thing for you. Let us know if you need those quotes. <laughs> we got you. Um, but now I'm going to go back on to our loan information page, and you'll see that our construction holdback section was expanded quite lengthily. Um, so you see more options in here, as in if I want to include a full construction loan agreement instead of just our typical loan and security agreement. You'll see that I have the option of including a fund control agent as well, maybe a construction contractor which I'm gonna include here. I'm gonna include my good friend, Nima, and I'll just put in any random address here. And then I'm gonna tell them exactly what um, percent of completion I want, so maybe 75% in the next 60 days, so on and so forth. Maybe same thing goes for a design professional. In this case, I will use my good friend, Melissa Martarella. Maybe same address, maybe her and Nemo work together just like they do here at Um, uh, So you see that's expanded quite lengthily as well. And you know what, maybe I wanna make this an even more complicated transaction instead of a 12 month fix and flip, 12 month rich loan, I'm actually gonna make this a 30 year rental loan. So maybe I'll drop my interest rate down to 4% instead of eight. Maybe I wanna have this calculated out 365 over actual instead of 360. Um, we do have lots of options here in Lightning Docs, and actually, if I go back to that first page, the client specific conditions page, you'll see even more that I will be touching on. Um, but if you do need something coded in here specifically, chances are we likely already have it coded in like this page specifically. Um, so we can always grant you guys access to this feature as well. Um, maybe I'm doing a variable interest rate. Maybe it's going to change um, 12 months after the first payment and another six months in between payments. I'll cap it at 8% um, and then again at 18% and then the maximum I'm going to charge is 22%. Um, for the variable interest rate, again, a couple pre-codes in here as well. I'm going to choose Wall Street Journal Prime, hanging on by a thread, but I'm going to choose it anyway. Um, and then last but not least, I can include specific amortization as well. So if I want to just fully amortize, just straight principal and interest payments, maybe I want to get rid of the interest only feature. All I'm doing is tweaking this interview accordingly. So this is actually a question that gets commonly asked to me is if we include different loan templates for different loan types. Um, the answer to that is no, because exactly like I just showed you on this page, all you really have to do is tweak the interview to fit whatever loan that you're working on. Um, it doesn't drop in and replace templates, but it will drop in and take out specific language based on the terms and states that are selected. Moving past this, I'm gonna make this an extremely complicated signature block. So like I said, our system will keep asking you signing, for signing authority until it tracks down an individual signer. So maybe instead of Audi Munoz as the signer, I'm actually gonna say that Home Buyer LLC is managed by Audi Munoz Construction LLC. Instead of an individual, I'm gonna change that to an LLC, maybe in the state of Alaska. Just to spice things up. Um, after that, of course, it's going to ask me who's signing on behalf of Audi Munoz Construction LLC. In this case, I'm going to use my good friend Michael Trailer LLC um, for type of entity. I'm going to put this again as an LLC, maybe in Alabama this time. 
10 for the title on this of manager. Um, and then of course, you'll see here that another page generated asking who's allowed to sign on behalf of that LLC, so on and so forth. But of course, if I change Michael Trailer LLC, switch that from an, an LLC back to an individual, that whole extra page section goes away um, just because it knows that Michael can actually sign on his own behalf and not on behalf of the company. But in this case, I am going to tweak it back to an LLC. I'm going to say that Michael Trader is the manager. And I'll also say that Michael owns that LLC as well. And I will just say on the media here, individual, and we're good to go. Cool. So now I can go ahead and if I'm satisfied with my results one more time, I made this a little bit more complicated by speaking the signature block, maybe, um, like I said, putting a full construction loan agreement with a longer loan term. Once I'm satisfied, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did the first time. I'm going to click this finish button in the bottom right hand corner. Again, system is going to do some thinking and then pop me right back to that portal. Um, just one more thing to note, that, actually, that finish button will actually save your work every single time um, you click on it as well. So you'll never lose any of the information. You never have to worry about kind of reeking and just getting into the woodwork of that. So it's going to pop me right back to this landing page here, where I can either download my loan document or return to the interview. Don't worry about this third button right here that says export answers. That's really only used by us in-house in the event that we need to look into an issue. 99.99% um, .99 you will never have to worry about that button. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my loan documents opened up here as well, which looks like it's doing on my other screen. So I'll make sure that I drag this over here once that happens. Cool, cool. I'm going to go ahead and click Enable Editing in case I want to change anything after the fact. And I'm going to open up the full screen so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> but moving past this, like I mentioned, since I switched that from just a regular loan to a ground up construction loan, you'll see that our entire loan and security agreement was actually replaced with a construction loan and security agreement. Um, so this does look a little bit different. You will see the terms changing. You will see our sections changing. Um, again, lots of boilerplate information, lots of straightforward information, but you will see starting at section 2.8 is where we customize our terms just a little bit. Um, of course, if I scroll back up to my key provision summary, You'll see that all of that information has changed as well. You'll see that it's now principal and interest payments instead of just interest only payments. You'll see that I said that this was a variable interest rate, so all of that information is detailed here as well. Um, and if I scroll through, because as we know, I made our borrower a little bit more complicated as well, I do want to show you the way that the system built out the signature blocks. So like I said, Lightning Docs can handle any number of nested LLCs. So I said that my borrower was Home Buyer LLC and its manager was Audi Munoz Construction LLC. Um, and again, it will track down an individual signer. So I said Audi Munoz Construction LLC was managed by Michael Trailer LLC. And until I said Michael Trailer was an individual, it will keep asking me um, who's the last sign, who's the last sign, who's the last sign. You get it. Um, scrolling past this, you will see in our secured note that an index section was added in since I said that this is a variable interest rate. And you'll see different details on that as well, such as the initial interest rate limitations, subsequent interest rate limitations, so on and so forth. Um, you'll also see that um, our number of interest and principal payments change as well. We no longer include monthly payment amounts just because those numbers are constantly changing just based off of the terms that I selected. Um, after that, it's pretty much straightforward, but I do want to get right back into this interview here just so I can show you a little bit of the way that we're able to customize this interview exactly to your use. So 
So if you remember by my lovely little Kim Kardashian quotes that I showed you guys earlier, once I entered in my specific password, it showed me the way that the interview was specifically built just for me, Audie Munoz. Um, so we can do the same thing for you if you were to sign up to use Lightning Doc, or if you're already signed up to use Lightning Doc. Um, we would essentially be able to give you access to any number of these custom features that we typically keep out of your way. Um, the only reason we hide them from our normal users is just because they're not relevant to a whole lot of transactions. So instead of having them overwhelmingly just in your face, we'd rather just hide them to keep this interview as user-friendly as possible. So on and so forth. Um, but like I said, we can do any number of things, whether that be giving you access to certain features or whether that just be setting default so you don't have to type in your lender's address a gazillion times. Um, we can set any number of defaults for you in the actual interview. Um, and then the last little thing that I do want to touch on here before we go into our Q&A is probably the most common question that I get asked, and that is if we integrate with any system or if we have an API built. Um, we are in the process of switching software providers and building out an API, but until that happens, we do actually have system integration available. So whether you're working with a loan servicer such as Mortgage Automator, the Mortgage Office, Liquid Logic, LendingWise, you name it, um, you can actually export data from their system and upload it right into Lightning Docs. Um, so the file that's chosen is what's known as a JSON file, and I could just select it right here off of my computer, just as I would any other file. Um, in this case, I actually downloaded it a little bit earlier today just to prep for this interview, so I'm going to select it right here from my download folder. And once I hit this Go to Interview button, again, our system is going to think about it just a little bit. But you will see that our interview actually pre-populated with all of the information from that JSON export. Um, so you'll see here that I created a whole new document set. So instead of including my name um, on this first page right here, if you remember I entered in my name and my email, it'll actually, once it gets loaded, change that to my good friend Sylvester Preparington. Um, you'll see that it has specific defaults for holdbacks in there. It's has our default on the loan information page, so our closing date was populated, loan amount, loan term, so on and so forth. Um, this is commonly used by our clients and more so commonly asked if we have it available, just because a lot of times people are, you know, just like any of us, understaffed, just running out of time. We don't have time to enter in all of this information into a million different loan systems. Um, so it's easier to just use the JSON export. But yeah, that is basically Lightning Docs at its core. Um, I have Casey right here sitting on the background. So if there's any questions that anyone has, please feel free to ask them now in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, and if not, we can call it and we can enjoy our Wednesdays. But yeah, Casey, anything in there? Not yet. All right. No worries. Um, I'll give it a couple more seconds here, but until then, I will go ahead and just call it a day. Um, just something before I go, I do, first of all, I'm going to stop my screen share. Um, if any of you happen to be at AAPL next week, it's actually exactly a week from today. It's going to be October 19th through 21st in Las Vegas. I believe that's users. Um, and that is going to be our big hard launch for Lightning Docs. So I am going to be conducting live Lightning Docs demonstrations. We're going to have our own Lightning Docs booth at the conference too, as well as a coffee cart. Um, so in the event that any of you are running out of steam and need a little pick-me-up, please come stop by our booth. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have, more than happy to give you another live demonstration, maybe show you some of the other features that I didn't touch on quite as much, just show you a little bit more of the way that our automation is built out. Um, hi, Carb, Bright of Baker, Talamar, shout out to you guys. I love you guys. Big hugs. Um, yeah. But until then, please stop by our booth at APL if you're going to be there. And more so, please feel free to ask me questions anytime. Um, I'll go ahead and I don't know if there's any way for me to include my email on here, but I will just say it. My email is a.munoz, that's a.m-u-n-o-z at Jirasi, LLP. Um, you can also alternatively visit www.lightningdocs.com. There is a way for us to get contacted through the website as well. So if you have any questions anytime, please feel free to just let me know. And I hope you all have a great rest of your Wednesday. Bye.